Hi guys, you might remember I did a video a while ago on how to make 3D rooms for comics on Clip Studio, but someone commented, it's so much harder on the iPad. So, let's see how much harder it is. Disclaimer, I don't really use Clip Studio on the iPad, so this is all new to me. The theory should be the same, so let's check it out. Let me get an activation code real quick. By the way, you don't really need one, you can just use the limited features option, but it won't let you export as a PNG or do most functions, but it's great for practice. Okay, I already downloaded some to do a similar setup as the original video, so let's go! The idea of making the full room instead of just background is so you can come back to the file every time a scene takes place here. Now I have all the assets I need, just create a new canvas, and like in the previous video, I will go for 4K. This is my preference and it's definitely overkill, to say the least. Any size should be okay. And by the way, this is the default workspace. I'll be focusing on this icon here to access my assets, and this one here to check I'm always in the same layer. You want all your 3D assets to be in the same layer, to align them properly, and to be able to move the entire room or set all at once. Let's start with the essentials. A desk! This one has a lot of extra items and I don't really want them, so let's clear them out. You need to click this tool icon here. This is a list of all the 3D assets in your canvas. Click the drop down menu of the desk and you will see all the assets it has. Now you can just toggle off the visibility with the eye. You can always come back and toggle them on again. Once that's done, we can use the desk as a reference on where to place the other stuff and build from there. If you're completely new at this, to move, scale up or down your object, you're going to use these curves and arrows that show up when you tap the asset. The red line is to tilt back and forth. The green one is to rotate left to right. And the orange is more like a diagonal rotation. For straight moves, you have the arrows. The green and blue, left or right, back and forth. And green is up or down. Lastly, the gray circle surrounding all is for you to scale up or down. You just click one of the triangles and move outwards for the asset to get bigger and inwards for the asset to be smaller. You will need to use the first three icons that show up on top of your object here. They are camera movements meaning the object doesn't move, but your angle of vision does. The first one will allow you to make a 360 movement around your object. The second one will let you navigate the screen and not change the angle. And the third changes the distance. This is the core and basics of working in 3D. Like I mentioned in the previous video, you can also use the multiple angle view to build a room with more ease by going to menu and multiple angle views. I found this is not very useful on a small screen, but maybe you like it. It has a bit of a learning curve, but it might be useful for you. Nice! Now we have a room, you have two options. If your room is ready and you don't need to color it, just duplicate it and rasterize the layer. Now just copy it, paste it on another file and you are done! If you're going with this option, you should probably know that you can change the ambience light. If you're going to need to color it, you can go to layer, cover layer to lines and tones and hit preview. Now here you're going to play around a little bit with the settings to fit your own personal style. So, as I said earlier, I work in 4K and the program closed when I tried to do this because the file was like super heavy, but if you work with normal sizes, it shouldn't be an issue. So how did you like this advanced sims tutorial, iPad edition? Let me know if it worked for you and like and subscribe for Art.